Welcome back to another Disney World four park challenge. But this time, I can park hop whenever I want. Why don't you guys come along? Let's go make some memories together. Starting today, January 9th, 2024, there are no more park hopping restrictions. Meaning that in the first time since 2020, you can freely jump from park to park regardless of the time of day. And I figured I would celebrate today's milestone by having the wonderful Disney World cast members pick my day. Each gets to tell me their favorite snack and attraction in their respective park and which park I should head to next. So without further delay, let's get hopping. Of course, the perfect park to kick off this challenge is the Magic Kingdom, which is also my first visit of the new year. And what a perfect day to do a snack-based challenge because the new Disney Eats collection has recently dropped here in the parks. Like, look how bright and colorful all of this stuff is. It is all so very, very cute. Disney park snacks are some of the most iconic things associated with the parks, and I love when they release collections for these. My favorite one is definitely the Spirit Jersey. I'm a sucker for Spirit Jerseys in general, but I love just how vibrant it is. The whole collection just kind of reminds me of graffiti. Uh, it's very drippy, it's very, just very bright and colorful, and it's gonna be hard not to buy anything from this collection. All right, I'm here with my very first cast member. Hello there, my name is Sue, and I work at the Emporium on Main Street, USA. And what's your favorite snack here at Magic My, Kingdom? Probably either the spring rolls. Okay. Or just a pretzel with cheese. Okay. If you had to pick a spring roll flavor, which one would uh, it be? I know that's hard. That is hard. Um, I would like the traditional pizza one, the okay. one with the pepperoni in there. Those okay. are my favorite. Perfect. And what is your favorite attraction here at Magic Kingdom? Ariel, under All the right. sea. I'm totally fine with that. Thank you for <laughs> helping welcome. me out today. Have a great day. You too. I'm actually really excited to have the spring rolls. And thank you, Sue, for the recommendation because it's been a very, very long time since I've had them. And I actually really love Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, which is its full government name. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Little Mermaid as a movie, but as an attraction, as a dark ride, I think it's actually really well made. But yeah, let's head over to Adventureland. Let's go grab our first snack of the day. The spring rolls have become one of the most popular Magic Kingdom snacks Within the last handful of years, there are a couple of flavors that change out seasonally. They've had a few limited edition flavors of the last few years, but the one that she picked is the tried and true standard, the pepperoni pizza. I often forget just how popular these things are until I get to the booth and the line is wrapped around the little planter. It didn't take too long, but it's always funny just to see everyone lined up for an iconic snack. They often have pepperoni and cheeseburger uh, almost all the time. They've changed out a few times the last couple of years, but uh, I think I normally like cheeseburger better. Did come with a little cup of marinara. Also, if you don't want to get two of one flavor, you can get one of each. You can get one cheeseburger and one pepperoni. Very crispy, very greasy. Mmm. Very flavorful. It's actually a very nostalgic taste to me. It doesn't quite taste like pizza pizza. It kind of tastes like, kind of like a Lunchable, if that makes sense. Kind of like school pizza. But don't let that deter you from how good these are. So part of the reason why it's been a long time since I've had these is the price. These are very expensive for such a tiny, tiny treat. Like that is one of my two. It is $9.50 for these. That's more than the price of most kids meals in this park. So if you're looking to budget on snacks, this is not the best option. There are far cheaper snacks in this park. You, like I said, you can get an entire kid's meal uh, for the price of this. It's good, but the price usually pushes me away. But clearly with the long line that was featured every day here, these are still gonna remain that price. Now let's rank these out of five park hoppers. I don't know. I'm gonna give this a four. I don't think it's the better of the two. I think the cheeseburger one is better. And that price is such a deterrent for me that as a local, again, I'm not gonna make the time to come to this stand and buy these unless they have something that's like a brand new flavor. But these are delicious. They're very flavorful and very iconic. Those are so greasy. I feel like I'm wearing lip gloss now. Delicious lip gloss though. Well, that is one snack down of my four today. So now we're gonna head to my first attraction of my four today, and that is Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, TM. Little Mermaid is currently sitting at a five minute wait, which is what we love to see. This is a Omni Mover dark ride, kind of similar to the Haunted Mansion where you ride in a continuously moving vehicle and it retells the story of the Little Mermaid. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of Little Mermaid as a film, um, but 
as an attraction. I love dark rides. I wish Fantasyland had more of them. And this ride kind of scratches that itch of having a well-paced, fun attraction. That is our first attraction of the day with Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. I really do like that attraction. Every time I ride it, I do wish we had more dark rides here in Fantasyland. Dark rides are essentially Disney. That's why I like, I love Disneyland so much. There's so many there and I wish we had all of those here. Well, with that snack and attraction out of the way, that means we are done with Magic Kingdom. So I am gonna go find another cast member to ask where I should park up because I still have to go to Epcot, Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. Hi there. I have a question for you. Okay. If you could park hop to either Epcot, Hollywood Studios, or Animal Kingdom, where would you go next? Hollywood Studios. You all right? You got it, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, well, it looks like I am headed to Disney's Hollywood Studios for park number two of our challenge today. And that cast member didn't want to be on film, which is absolutely fine. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable, force anybody to be in my vlogs, but thank you for the recommendation. That's not where I thought I was going to be headed. I thought I was going to be going to Epcot next. And almost forgot riding the Little Mermaid attraction was my first attraction here at Magic Kingdom of 2024. And if you guys watched my Universal Studios uh, annual pass holder video, I started to use the app Log Ride, which tracks all the attractions you go on throughout the year. So I'm gonna mark that as my first attraction. And by the end of the year, I will see how many different attractions I go on in every single part. But I will see you guys over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. All right, here we go. Our first park hop before 2 p.m. ever. That felt very weird to do. It, I feel like I shouldn't be here right now. But anyways, let's go find our next cast member. Hi, I'm Austin. I work over here at the uh, stunt show. And uh, my favorite attraction at Hollywood Studios is definitely the Tower of Terror. Okay. Favorite snack at the park. It's going to be controversial. I'm a big fan of the tachos over at uh, Woody's Lunchbox. Interesting. Is that really controversial? I don't know. I like the tachos. Sounded, I think that's a good pick. Sounded fun to say. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Austin. All right. Well, you heard it here first. I'm going to be going to do the Tower of Terror, which, again, has been a long time since I've done it. First attraction here of 2024 at Disney Hollywood Studios and tachos over at Toy Story Land. I don't think that's a divisive snack. I think that's a pretty popular snack. But either way, they are delicious. So I think I'm actually going to go check out the attraction first because I don't really want to eat a bowl full of tater tots with meat and cheese and then go ride an attraction that's gonna throw me up and down. Also, Austin told me to go over to Animal Kingdom next, which again is not where I thought I was gonna be sent. I figured it was going to be in order of the park's opening, like everyone's been trained to do. He said Animal Kingdom is very underappreciated and I agree with that. Looks like Tower is currently at a 45 minute wait, which is good for me in terms of placing a mobile order for my tachos. My mobile order is and it expires in about an hour, which is plenty of enough time. So we're gonna go ride this attraction and then we're gonna go get okay. our snack here at Hollywood Studios. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror is a very popular attraction here in Disney's Hollywood Studios, where you enter a long abandoned hotel where five guests mysteriously vanished one Halloween night almost 100 years ago. And for some reason, you're foolish enough to step back into the hotel with disastrous consequences. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. You are the passengers on a motion common elevator about to ascend into your very own episode of The Twilight Zone. You are about to discover what lies beyond the fifth dimension, beyond the deepest, darkest corner of the imagination, in the Tower of Terror. Go up, we gotta go down. We're we going up, we're we going down. We're going down, I think. No, we're going up! Oh! 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 Oh, here we go, we're going up! Oh! 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 That's not good. Oh!
Tower of Terror is complete, which is our second attraction of the day. I feel like I don't really do it very much. I mostly really enjoy the theme of it, how highly detailed all the Imagineers put into creating what truly looks like a hotel that was deserted almost 100 years ago. And I always like to guess whether or not we're gonna go up or down first since the ride is entirely random. I also forget to count how many drops you normally get because it could be any amount, it's truly random. Well, since we're done here, that means it's time to go pick up our snack over at Woody's Lunchbox in Toy Story Land. I checked in for my mobile order, even though I am still on the other side of the park and I just got a message that it's already ready. So I'm gonna hustle and we're gonna go eat. Welcome to Toy Story Land, AKA Andy's Backyard. Woody's Lunchbox is a very popular quick service location here in Toy Story Land. In fact, it's so popular. Mobile order is usually the way to go here. The menu here is gonna have more elevated things like some grilled sandwiches, grown-up drinks, lunchbox tarts, and most importantly, the tachos. When I arrived here at Hollywood Studios, there was at least an hour wait until the next pickup window, so definitely plan for if you're coming here. There's also very little seating because it's so popular, so I actually am gonna be parked outside on a trash can. These are the tachos, potato barrels coated with beef and bean chili, shredded cheese and signature queso with tomatoes and corn chips, finished with sour cream and a sprinkle of green onions. Not gonna lie, definitely didn't expect to be eating essentially a full meal. This is not really a snack, but I'm not complaining because they're delicious. They do have hot sauce over there. Personally, I think it needs it. Can you tell I like hot sauce? All right, we're gonna try and grab a bite of everything. Ooh, look at that cheese pull. Got all the beef and chili underneath. These are so good. And they're gonna be very filling, I can tell you that already. This is a massive portion that's easily shareable. It like perfectly scratches that Tex-Mex itch. It's nice and savory, it's cheesy. That sour cream adds a nice um, creaminess to it. Not all the potato barrels, AKA tater tots, are really crispy, but the ones that are, it's a nice satisfying crunch along with those corn chips that are in there. At a little over $10 per portion, it's a pretty good deal, especially compared to the spring rolls I had over at Magic Kingdom. I've eaten probably maybe a third of this, and there's still more to go. Very shareable, very flavorful. I'm gonna give this five park hoppers. This is so good. All right, well, we are done here in Hollywood Studios. We did Austin's favorites, which were eating tachos at Woody's Lunchbox and riding Tower of Terror. So because he recommended Animal Kingdom next, that's where we're going. I'll see you guys there made it to Disney's Animal Kingdom for our third park of the day. Hi, I'm Josue, I work here at Plain Tree Barbecue. My favorite attraction, well, I love Everest. For me, it's the okay. best attraction that I've ever seen before. And the best meal, I love the mac and cheese here. The mac and cheese from yes, here? Yes, okay. it's really delicious. Awesome. Just come here, people, it's really delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I think Josue and I are on the same page with agreeing that Everest was the pick today. And I love that it has single rider lines, so this should be very quick to go ride it. And I'm definitely gonna go ride it before I eat because another cast member has recommended a meal instead of just a snack. But that's what he said he likes. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go. So we're gonna go and... So we're gonna go and ride Everest and then we're gonna go eat again. Guys, I'm getting so full. Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain is one of my top favorite attractions in all of Walt Disney World. This is a indoor and outdoor roller coaster that goes backwards. You climb to the top of the Forbidden Mountain where you encounter a terrifying Yeti. Looks like our Everest is only a 20 minute wait today, which is fairly low for this attraction. But we're gonna go to single rider. This is one of few Disney World attractions that actually offers a single rider line. So we're gonna go to the left of the gift shop, which is right there and down. This little pathway, single rider. Last year I actually did a full four part challenge featuring all of the single rider lines. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll link that in the description below and in the cards at the end. You can see how fast I got on attractions that day. And look at this, there is nobody in line for single rider.
Expedition Everest is such a gem of an attraction. It is so fun. I have to do it every single time I'm here at Animal Kingdom, and no other ride makes me feel as close to blacking out as that attraction does. That backward spiral portion where you're in the pitch black darkness, you are glued to the back of your seat, but it is still so fun and it's worth doing, again, every single time that I'm here. Now, let's go eat, again, the pulled pork mac and cheese over at Flame Tree Barbecue. Flame Tree Barbecue is a very popular quick service location located just outside Dino Land towards the front of the park. As the name suggests, they do specialize in barbecue, everything from ribs and chicken and pulled pork. And I'm gonna be getting the baked macaroni and cheese with pulled pork, which is baked macaroni and cheese topped with smoked pulled pork, onion rings, and coleslaw. Okay, first of all, can we talk about the hidden Mickey? onion rings that are on my dish. I definitely didn't expect to have them positioned like this. They get points for that immediately. Flame Tree Barbecue is a place I don't really eat at a whole lot. It's not for any particular reason. It just is never on my radar, but everyone always raves about it. Now I have had this dish before, and unfortunately last time I didn't really care for it. So that was a long time ago, and I'm kind of hoping that whatever I have today ends up kind of swaying me in a better direction. This is also incredibly shareable. Like this is a ton of food for just one person. And it's a decent price too. It's just a little bit more expensive than the tachos were over at Hollywood Studios. Pretty decent onion ring. It's a little soggy because it's just drenched in barbecue sauce, but I like it. Start digging in here a little bit, see if I can find a pretty decent bite. Got some mac, some pulled pork and slaw, which I don't normally like slaw by itself, but like on burgers or pulled pork sandwiches, I think it's delightful. All right, got our bite there. Got a bit of everything. That's pretty good. It's the tiniest bit of bland. I think it's a very safe dish. The mac and cheese, I think, is what doesn't really have any flavor. Uh, but it is good because the barbecue sauce really sweetens it up quite a bit. But I'm definitely not going to be able to finish this. This is going to be something I take to go. Because I still have Epcot to do. And uh, this would easily make for a second meal tomorrow when I'm at home. I got pulled pork. The pulled pork is pretty decent. It could use a bit more flavor as well. And I will say this is a pretty large improvement over the one I had in previous years. I think out of five park hoppers, I might actually give this a 4.5. I think it's really, really good. I get the hype now. Again, could use a bit more flavor. I do love barbecue. In fact, I grew up in Kansas City and Texas, so I know barbecue. And for theme park barbecue, I think this does a pretty decent job. Also, when we talk about this dining location I'm in right now, Flame Tree Barbecue is the prettiest dining location. It's huge. I am right on the water. Everest is out yonder. And I've got all this nature around me. There's birds everywhere. There's squirrels everywhere. There's this giant uh, bamboo right in front of me that's just clacking and clanking. It's pretty peaceful back here. Got my uh, makeshift doggy back here. I don't think anything could possibly go wrong with the way I have this situated. But anyways, we are done with Animal Kingdom, had a wonderful ride on Everest, and had some amazing food over at Flame Tree Barbecue. And normally I would have asked a cast member where to go next, but there's only one option. We're going to Epcot. We'll see you guys there. Welcome to our fourth and final park of the day, Epcot. Hi, I'm Joy. Uh, I'm PhotoPass here at Epcot. Uh, my favorite attraction here is the Grand Fiesta Tour, and the best snack is definitely the baguette in France. Awesome, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. As per Joy's recommendation, I am headed into the World Showcase to go do both attraction and snack. I'm going to be heading towards Mexico first. Grand Fiesta Tour is a wonderful attraction. I actually didn't expect her to say that. She knows the good stuff. The baguette threw me off, though. I didn't expect someone to just mention, go eat some bread. Not that I have any issues with it. I'm fine with eating some bread. Grand Fiesta Tour is a slow-moving boat ride inside of the pyramid in the Mexico Pavilion. It stars Donald and his two friends, Panchito and Jose, as Donald gets lost and his two friends set out across Mexico to go find him.
Grand Fiesta Tour checkmark off of our list as our fourth and final attraction today. I really love that attraction. It is a very calm boat ride, complete walk on. Epcot is oddly dead today. Very underrated in my opinion. And I love the homages to Mexico. I love seeing all the little figures in there. It's kind of like it's a small world a little bit. And then the very end, the three animatronics of Jose, Donald, and Panchito. But anyways, that means we are headed to get our final snack across the park over in France. We're gonna be at Léal to grab a baguette. Léal Boulangerie Patisserie is shockingly located in the France Pavilion. And surprisingly to everybody, they sell French pastries. They've got a great selection of hot savory sandwiches and delicious French sweet pastries. But I'm here for the simplest item on their menu, the full-sized baguette. Look at it. It's a literal full baguette. Wait. A thing of beauty. Extremely inexpensive. $4 for the whole thing. You can get a smaller one that's about half the size for I think a dollar less. So you might as well just get the full thing. Obviously, very shareable. Uh, the cheapest thing I've had all day. We really have had no sweet things today. What's up with that, Disney cast members? Why didn't you give me sweet things to eat? Now they do give you butter for it. I got like six or seven pats of butter. Um, I didn't ask for that many, they just gave them to me. But they also have jam. It does cost extra. They have little tiny jars of jam that you could add with it. I didn't ask how much it was, but I decided not to get it. Clearly, I'm not gonna eat this whole thing in one sitting, but let's rip it. Ugh. I'm just gonna bite right into it. That's a baguette. It's not warmed. I don't know if it was even an option to be, have it warmed. They didn't ask me. I probably would prefer it warm. Other than it's just a room temperature piece of bread, baked fresh every day. Is $4 expensive for a baguette? I frankly don't know. I don't buy them on a normal basis, but for a Disney World snack that's under five bucks, it's a good steal. I didn't grab a knife, so I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Nice and salty butter. If there isn't anything crazy or anything to write home about, who doesn't love bread? It's French bread, it's cheap, it's shareable. You can walk around World Showcase and just munch on it all day. It's kind of hard to rank this because there's nothing spectacular. But honestly, as far as French bread goes, this is probably a 4.5. I think the 0.5 missing, but just was a little bit more pizzazz to it. If it was maybe used as part of a sandwich or if it was warm. But again, it's bread. I'm not mad about it. Thank you guys for coming along with me today on my first four park challenge of 2024. I had an amazing time at all four parks today eating snacks and going on attractions. And it's all thanks to the recommendations of truly wonderful cast members. I went into the app and gave all four of my cast members cast compliments for their wonderful recommendations and just having fun with me. They were so excited to tell me how much they love this attraction or love this snack. Cast members truly never get enough praise. They are the bread and butter of what makes this company run. When you're here on vacation, keep in mind cast members are people too and they deserve love and respect just like you would anybody else. Please take care of your cast members and they will take care of you. If you guys haven't done so already, make sure you guys like our video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you guys get updates on all of our future adventures. Give us a super like if you really love what we do. Helps generate funds for the channel. It gives us the ability to go out and do more fun things at theme parks to give you guys fun entertainment. And as always, thanks for making memories with us. I've been Adrian and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.